Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Yeager and I'm with Ian Jacobs, uh, the W3C payment lead. And he has something um, that uh, to share with us, his expert opinion uh, with working with so many years uh, with W3C and the wonderful work that he has produced uh, with a lot of the consortium member companies. So first question uh, I'd like to ask Ian is, uh, um, what are the payment activities uh, that currently you're working on and uh, how uh, would you want to share some of um, the, the work that currently undergoing? Sure. Uh, thanks, Rachel, and hi, everyone. Um, we have been working for a number of years to try to improve uh, the checkout experience on the web. So for many, many years, the checkout experience um, has been roughly the same and uh, as mobile devices become more popular, uh, it becomes more difficult to type on small screens. Uh, at the same time, there are digital wallets that have emerged that are gaining traction. And so a few years ago, we began to look at those factors and a few other ones and to say, um, maybe we can improve browsers so that we can have a better checkout experience, one that's faster and also more secure. So. Uh, you mentioned all the stakeholders. We have now, you know, dozens of companies who are participating in this work. And um, the re APIs that we've been working on are available in most browsers. Um, we are still working to increase interoperability. So we have not finished our specifications, but um, they are available. They're in use today. And so, for example, uh, Shopify, sorry, I'm going to turn that off. Shopify did a big experiment. Um, a couple of years ago where uh, with 50 or so of their largest merchants, they tested their own uh, solution with the web payments APIs and they found that on average checkout times went down about 30 seconds. And so that's substantial. And so we think that our APIs are actually capable of achieving some of our goals, um, but we, we haven't seen uh, tremendous adoption yet. And that's why we continue to work very closely with uh, merchants. Um, we mentioned a moment ago the Merchant Business Group. So we hope that that is another place where we can socialize the work that we're doing and hear more from merchants. Uh, we're working with their payment service providers because those are the stakeholders who actually use the APIs and get checkout experiences out to you know, millions of users. Um, and we also work closely with um, the sort of digital digital wallet providers, uh, including Samsung Pay, Google Pay, Apple Pay, um, and others who are interested in being able to plug in their digital wallets into the web. So you can make payments from um, either a native app to a website or from a, a different web application to a website. Um, so, so that's really what we're building um, from, from a customer experience. Um, we're sort of aiming at a user experience where you push a button on a, on a merchant's website and um, you're basically prompted to authenticate and prove who you are. And if you uh, can do that using ideally uh, the new authentication standards of FIDO2, including web authentication, which is being standardized in W3C, if you uh, succeed in authenticating, the payment happens and you're done. So if you imagine the best payment experience you've ever had. Um, maybe it's with a digital wallet where you sort of launched the app and you pointed it at your face and you were sort of done. We would like web standards to support that level of great user experience. Um, that sort of user experience that we're becoming familiar with in native apps is also more secure. And so we're sort of moving the whole web in this direction of um, browser support for uh, greater uh, security at the same time as we improve privacy and speed up checkout. So better user experience, better privacy, and better security. So, so that's really what we're focused on. Um, some of the most exciting bits these days, um, I mentioned authentication. So in new regulatory changes in Europe, like Payment Services Directive 2, and in other parts of the world, strong customer authentication is now an important requirement. And so the FIDO2 work that I mentioned for strong authentication is um, an important 
aspect to web solutions for strong customer authentication. So we're working very closely with that community because we have payments use cases on the one hand and FIDO authentication on the other. And we think that if we bring them together um, in a streamlined way, we can sort of, again, get this great checkout experience and satisfy the strong customer authentication requirements um, of PSD2 and, and other regulatory uh, re uh, areas of the world. So, um, so that's really exciting. We, we see a real opportunity to make the payment standards with web authentication better than other ways of doing uh, uh, checkout with strong authentication on the web. So that's what we're aiming for. Yeah, I, I think that uh, with all this uh, work that you mentioned, W3C and, and, and you and the uh, payment um, activities group certainly play a, a very vital role in bringing, gelling everything together to, to bring uh, all parties to talk about the actual implementation. Uh, so in, in the implementation process, how does uh, the W3C activities fit into the picture? I mean, is it like uh, in the prototype or in the pilot or how, 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 how do you play in into this? Yeah? That, that's a good question. So W3C a long time ago, well, let me back up one. So our primary deliverable in W3C are these technical standards. And so the question is, um, how, do, how do you make high quality technical standards? And I think there are a number of uh, supporting elements that help get you there. First of all, you have to have the right people at the table with expertise. Um, secondly, uh, you need uh, patience that takes time to, to bring people together. Um, we increasingly rely on uh, test suites. So these are tests, for example, that you would run in your browser because we'd like both, th or sorry, all browsers um, to uh, sort of function the same way. And so the test suite is a demonstration that two different parties or three different parties could pick up the specification, implement it, and get the same results. Um, so that helps improve quality. Um, we get a lot of developer feedback because our community is open. And so sort of anybody in the world can send us feedback. We also get review from other groups at W3C for accessibility, privacy, internationalization, security. So we have sort of quality checks architectural checks um, all along the process of development of the specification. So you hope that with all of that review and implementation feedback and testing that you produce a, uh, a high quality standard. What W3C does not do today, although we have done it historically, is produce our own software implementation of our own standards. So we rely on the industry to do that and um, we help them through test suites um, and they can participate in the development of the test suites. Um, we also have documentation that uh, and education initiatives to help people use the specifications and technologies. Um, sometimes we will work with people uh, as part of the development of the specification, people will work on, you said, proofs of concept and demos and, and those help I think communicate what people have in mind. Um, typically those are not r robust implementations of specifications. They're just showing you what, what a desired user experience might be or, um, so we do sort of work with people to, to do that as part of developing the specification, but ultimately it's up to the industry to voluntarily adopt the specification and the principal implementations come from um, industry. Certainly, I think that um, the uh, really plays uh, really plays a, a very important role in in getting all this uh, moving. Uh, I really appreciate your time in um, speaking about uh, your opinion in this uh, in this whole process, right? The, uh, and standard development process. Thank you so much, Anne. All right. Thanks, uh, Rachel, for having me. And, thank um, you. And Talk oh, I, I, yeah. I actually forgot to ask a very important question. Yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> uh, so it's like um, uh, all these publications, and I know that you have a wonderful uh, blog uh, site, right? You blog about that. So how do people look uh, for information and to... Yes, to so uh, the first thing I would say, the good news for people visiting the W3C website is that our very excellent communications team is redesigning it right now. So I look forward to, um, generally speaking, uh, um, uh, a more usable W3C website. 
Um, within the very large W3C website, the Web Payments Working Group has its own sort of landing page. And um, we use our landing page as a, as a blog, as you said. Um, so people can visit w3.org slash payments slash WG. And there you will find, you know, going back now for years, every few months or maybe more frequently these days, I'm summarizing the work of the group. So you can just sort of scroll back and see the evolution of the work that we're doing and the latest thinking. Um, so uh, the rest of the mailing list is, you know, those archives are all public and the specifications are public. So if you're technically minded, you can dive right into the specifications, but the Payments Working Group homepage might be a good starting point. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much, Ian. And I'm going to also direct the audience to all these links that um, oh, great. Uh, and to your blog also. Thank you so much, Ian. And okay. Pleasure talking you. to you, Rachel. Have okay. a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.